hi welcome in this video we are going to do an assignment on how to do flood frequency analysis using ev1 distribution and log pearson type 3 distribution and we are going to find out flow corresponding to two return periods 50 years and 100 years what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the calculations and show you these two techniques by using the 50 year return period and i'm going to have you do the calculations for 100 year which will be relatively simple because we will do all the basic work that we need what i have given to you is 10 years of annual maximum data for wabash river in lafayette now in practice 10 years of data is not enough so we should at least use 30 years of data but for the purpose of this exercise i'm just using 10 years of data to show you how to apply these two techniques so let's get started with ev1 distribution first so the expression that we have for ev1 is xt is equal to x bar minus square root of 6 divided by pi and then 0 0.5772 plus natural log of natural log of t over t minus 1 and the whole thing is multiplied by the standard deviation okay so x bar here is mean of sample which will be the mean of our q annual maximum series and sx is the standard deviation of sample okay um, and t is the return period okay so instead of xt i'm just going to say qt here um, x bar you can get the mean of this series uh, if your calculator allows you to do that if not what you can do is so x bar is q bar is equal to summation of all q's divided by n so n in this case is 10 okay so n is 10 i have done these calculations for you so for this we have mean of 53,290 CFS and then for standard deviation either you can use your calculator if your calculator does not allow to calculate standard deviation so the expression that we have for standard deviation is 1 over n minus 1 so x minus x bar square and then you take the square root of that so again x in this case is all our discharge values and x bar is the mean discharge which is 53,290 and again i have done this for you so the number that i got is 15,190 cfs okay so once you have these two numbers so sx will be this and x bar will be 53,290 and t is 50 for the first uh, return period so q 50 is going to be 53,290 minus square root of 6 divided by pi 3.142 0 0.5772 plus so this is natural log so just remember that so t is 50 and 50 minus 1 is 49 and then you multiply this whole thing this part by 15,190 so you do all this and the answer that i got was 92,663 and you really don't need to worry about the decimal places here so i have rounded up the number 
so CFS okay so you can see this is a relatively uh, straightforward method if you are going to use EV1 distribution or if you assume that the data fits the EV1 distribution okay and figuring out which distribution fits is a whole different topic so in this case we just assume that we are going to uh, use ev1 distribution for question number one okay so i have done this for q50 you i want you to do this for q100 so the only thing that will change in this expression when you are doing this for q100 will be t so in this calculation i use t equal to 50 when you do this for q100 i want you to use t equal to 100 and that's as straightforward as it is um, the other thing i want you to see from this is that when we did the accidents probability approach um, in the last assignment you can see that the number that we got is different than what is included in the sample so that's the advantage of using the probability distribution function okay so this is how you can do flood frequency analysis using ev1 distribution i gave you an em empty column here just in case if you want to use the empty column to get the values for calculating the standard deviation so in this case i can just use this column for x minus x bar and write down all these values and get the sum here and use that sum in this expression so if your calculator allows you to do the standard deviation calculation you don't need this column but if not you can use it uh, so so this is how you can do flood frequency analysis using ev1 distribution so in the next question I asked you to do the same using lock Pearson type 3 okay so this is on page 2 of your assignment so the the method that we are going to use for lock Pearson type 3 is the frequency factor method so the frequency factor method says you first have to find yt so which is y bar plus kt times sy and once you get yt then xt or qt will be 10 to the power of yt okay so to do this we need the y series so y series in this case is log of q okay so again i have done this for you you can verify the numbers that i got and i hope you are able to see these numbers um, so i have created the y series for you so once you have the y series you get y bar and sy similar to what we did before for the q series so again this column if you want you can use this as y minus y bar square and you get the sum and you calculate the sum by uh, standard deviation by using this sum so again i have done this for you so y bar that i got is 4.71 cfs and sy is 0 0.128 cfs okay and then we have to find kt so to find kt you need to know to find kt we need to know coefficient of skewness and t so t is 50 for this and the expression that we have for coefficient of skewness which is in the powerpoint that i have given you in the last video but i'll still write the expression here which is n summation of so this will be n x i minus x bar cube so summation of all the cubes of these differences so i is equal to 1 to n and divided by n minus 1 n minus 2 times s cube so x bar is in this case we are doing this for y series so y bar and 
S cube is S Y cube. Okay. And N in our case is 10. So you have all that you need to get the coefficient of skewness. If you want, you can use this column to get Y minus Y bar cube and sum those values and put that sum here to calculate the coefficient of skewness. So again, I have done this for you. So CY instead of, yeah, so CS or coefficient of skewness, CS of Y series that I got was minus 0 0.205. Okay, so once we know what the coefficient of skewness is, once we know what the T is, we can use the table that I uh, showed you in my video and I have also given you the table in this assignment. So this is the assignment um, page that you can use. So we are looking at return period of 50 so i'm going to look into this column and our coefficient of skewness is 0 0.205 negative 0 0.205 so our coefficient of skewness is going to lie somewhere in between these two values which is 1.945 and 1.890 so for negative point to its point it's 1.945 and our coefficient of skewness is 0 0.205 so it is going to be very close to 1.945 so i'm just going to linearly interpolate that so i will use point 1.945 and 1.890 so kt for CS of minus 0 0.205 is going to be so 1.945. I'm linearly interpolating it. So this is the value for 0 0.2. So 1.945 minus 1.890 divided by 0 0.3 minus 0 0.2. Yeah. And then we do 0 0.205 minus 0 0.2. Okay, so once you do that, the value that I got was 1.942. So we will use three decimals. So depending on how many decimals you use, the answer may be slightly different. So once we get KT, then we can find YT. So YT is going to be y bar so y bar in our case is 4.71 plus kt times sy so kt is 1.942 and sy is 0 0.128 and once i solve that the value that I get is again up to three decimals 4.957 and once I have that my xt so x50 which is q50 is 10 to the power of 4.957 and then if I solve that the value that I got was 90,570 CFS. Okay, so this is the answer that we have for 50 year flow. I'll just write down that here. So Q50 is 90,570 CFS. So this is using LP3. If I go back and look at the answer that I got for EV1 which is 92,663. So you can see that these numbers are slightly different, but they are not too far off from each other, okay? So this is how you can use the log Pearson type three method to get the flow corresponding to a return period. So now I did this for you 
I want you to do this for also 100 year flow. So the only thing that you need to do in this case is find KT. Once you get KT, Y bar will not change, SY will not change. All you have to do is replace 1.942 with what you get for the 100 year flow. So again, you can use the same table. So in this case, we are looking at this column for 100 year flow and our coefficient of skewness was 0 0.205. So now we will be interpolating between these two numbers. So whatever you get, it's going to be close to 2.178. So I still want you to interpolate and get the KT with three decimal places and find Q100. So Q100 will be 10 to the power of YT that you will get corresponding to 100 year return period flow and that will be your final answer. Okay, so this is how you can use these two techniques to get the flow corresponding to a given return period. And I hope you were able to follow the, the procedure for both methods. And I have calculated Q50 for you using these two methods. And I want you to practice and get the flow for 100 years. So with that, uh, I will stop here. And if you have any questions, please email me. And that is it for this assignment. Thank you and bye.